It is a beautiful November afternoon here in New England, and tonight I'll be photographing a nebula in the Milky Way galaxy right here from my back deck. You don't need a remote observatory or a fancy space telescope when you can do this in your own backyard. If all of this looks completely foreign to you, don't worry, I'll tell you exactly what each of these components do. The mount is arguably the most important part of any deep space astrophotography setup because this allows you to track the movement of the night sky as well as point at different objects in the sky. Some of them are very faint, so it can be a big help to use a piece of technology to assist you in finding them. On top of the EQ6, I have a William Optics Nightcat 51 quadruplet 8 bar refractor. What separates this from a telephoto lens is it has a fixed focal length of 250 millimeters, meaning you can't change the zoom. And also its optics are extremely sharp and optimized for space photography. Now this Nightcat 51 is a special edition of the very popular Redcat 51, and the only difference is the color scheme of the telescope. So if you've seen a Redcat 51 elsewhere, this is the exact same thing. Attached to the back of my Nightcat 51, I have my brand new camera, the ASI 2600 MC Pro dedicated astronomy camera. Upgrading from an entry-level DSLR to a dedicated astronomy camera like this is a bit like upgrading from your grandmother's Civic to a Ferrari. There's no comparison at all. The dedicated cooling system essentially allows us to eliminate any thermal noise on the sensor and improve our overall image quality. Tonight, in these conditions, I'll be running a sensor temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. And last but not least, the little scope and camera riding on top of my mount are used for auto guiding. That is the ASI 120 MMS and the ZWO 30 millimeter F4 guide scope. These two, in combination with software and my mount, are able to keep my object centered all night long and have very precise tracking accuracy. Now, all of this equipment here, I'll be controlling using my laptop, which is a very old Lenovo and a software program called Astrophotography Tool. Tonight is perfectly clear with not a single cloud in the sky and the forecast shows good seeing conditions as well. The moon will be rising soon after sunset and will illuminate the entire sky. This acts kind of like a normal form of light pollution. So in order to capture fine details in nebulae in the sky, we have to use narrowband filters, which essentially block a lot of the broad spectrum of light and allow a very small portion of light through to the sensor. Tonight, I will be using the Optolong L Ultimate filter. This is actually a pretty new filter and the successor to the Optolong L Extreme filter. This filter only allows through light from ionized hydrogen and oxygen in the night sky with very tight three nanometer band passes. What this allows us to do is essentially block out all of the light pollution and most of the moonlight and still get fine details from these very faint objects in the sky. The object I'm photographing tonight is the Rosette Nebula. If you're a fan of astrophotography, there's a good chance you've seen this one before. The Rosette Nebula is a region of hydrogen and oxygen gas surrounding a star cluster, and oh boy, is it bright. Not so bright that you can see it with the naked eye, but bright relatively speaking compared to other nebulae that we photograph in the night sky. It doesn't rise above my house until about 11 p.m., so in the meantime, I'll be working on other projects that you'll probably see in a future video. The combination of my Nightcat 51 telescope and the APS-C size sensor here in the ASI 2600 MC Pro gives me a very large field of view that is perfect for large nebula targets like this. It's a beautiful evening, the sun has just set behind me, there's a light breeze and not a single cloud in the sky. This is shaping up to be a great night for astrophotography. There's only one thing left. Wait for it to get dark and then it's go time. What do you think, Leo? You want to do some astrophotography tonight? Yeah, you do. I know you do.
So I'm back inside now. I would say in the warmth, but to be honest, it's really not that cold outside. It's still 62 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm for November in New England. As for the imaging session, everything is going great. The ASI 2600 MC Pro is an absolute game changer for me. I swear, these individual sub-exposures coming out of this camera are better than some of the complete projects that I did with my Nikon D3500. I feel like this is gonna be one of the most exciting moments in my astrophotography journey. I now have a camera built for astrophotography, sensitive to hydrogen wavelengths and able to be cooled in any temperature. I've really enjoyed my first week with the 2600 MC Pro. And honestly, all those trial runs have led up to this moment, my first complete project with it. And I really can't wait to get this into Photoshop. At the end of the day, every upgrade and every change is all centered around one thing and one thing only, and that's progressing in the hobby and making better images. On this channel, I hope not only to share my journey with you guys, but to help you start your own journey, or maybe even improve your own astrophotography by looking at the techniques that I use. I'm by no means an expert. You could probably still classify me as a beginner astrophotographer, but I put in a lot of effort over the years to maximize what I get out of my equipment and really improve my processes to get better images. So if you're interested in astronomy, astrophotography, or improving your images, stick around, this channel's for you. I hope you all enjoyed this video, my first YouTube video, and now let's see that Rosette Nebula.